Good evening, Fernwood. It's your TV pal, Neil, and it's time for some more Late Night Variety Madness with another episode of Fernwood Tonight. This is a reaction show where we watch the show together and then we talk about it because I have feelings and so do you. And if that sounds like it's your bag, then please stick around. Also, if you're a viewer who feels like you have the means to help support the channel, then please check out our Patreon and subscribe there because you'll get monthly updates on the channel and early access to episodes and more things when it's appropriate to talk about them. Today we are watching episode 41, that's the start of week 9, from August 29th, 1977. Last week was ratings week, so let's see how that ended up. Last Friday, there was no mirth in the studio as all of the mirth makers are on strike. Barth put down his terms and he hopes that the band will appreciate having a totally different service station to park at. Then we introduced barbershop quartet the Humdingers, though one of their players was also on strike. They sang a couple of classic hits, though Jerry didn't realize that they weren't actually barbers. Then we bring out Dr. Alexander Sandy Beach, who is there to talk about the serious condition of glaucoma and how it can be treated with marijuana. Jerry says that many of the mirth makers have been treating their own glaucoma, and Dr. Beach suggests that preventive action can be found for 80 bucks a lid. Then he shared an at-home test so people at home could determine whether or not they might need treatment. Then we round up the ratings week plan as Barth explained how many prizes had been planned to be given away that week and also explained the applause meter which would be read after each of the two contestants pled their cases. We then met Mrs. Blanche Moody who told us that her husband passed away distributing vaccines and that that left her laundromat in trouble. Then Bryce Clammer appeared and told the audience that his hair replacement procedure had not been finished, leaving each of the contestants with an even tie, at which point Barth pleads to the audience that the entire meaning of this plan was to make people happy and share happiness with others. And that gets the loudest applause of all, so Jerry announces that Barth has won the prize. And now that Barth still has 40 bucks, he makes sure to reach out to Dr. Beach. Everyone last week was a bit of a roller coaster, so let's take a look forward. Tonight from Fernwood, Fernwood tonight, 30 minutes of very remarkable entertainment coming to you almost live with your host for tonight, Mr. Bart Kimball. Tonight, Bart's guest will be 15 free, which is not what you're thinking. Mr. Dwayne Goff with the truth about the Osmond brothers. Mr. Ray Sawchuck, the assistant coroner who doesn't know what to do with his body. And Happy Kine without the mirth makers. And me, I'm Jerry Hubbard. And now here's your host and mine, Mr. Barth Gimbal. Thank you very much. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to Firmwood Tonight. My name is Barth Kimball, and as you may have noticed from the abnormally thin sound of our theme song, but nice try, Hap, uh, Happy Kinds <laughs> Mirth Makers are once again this evening leaving us mirthless, or at least without their particular brand of mirth, while they persist in their wildcat strike against Channel 6. It's driving me a little crazy, but uh, fortunately, however, tonight the guys were not picketing outside the station. And as I understand it, that's because they picked up a job playing at a Demolay Institute installation dance up in Chillicothe, Ohio. <laughs> I think all of us here on the uh, show hope the strike ends soon, though, and, and we also hope that the uh, dance pays enough to cover the fines that will be levied against the uh, fellows in the band by the Channel 6 family when they return to town. And they will return because they love show business. I think all of us love it. There really is no business like show business. <laughs> Certainly, it's like no business I know. <laughs> other lines of work that are more lucrative, certainly, but that, well, that have really less uh, inherent appeal. But with show business, I think it's safe to say that everything about it is appealing. <laughs> At least everything the traffic will allow. <laughs> of course, the traffic is never really appealing. I don't care where you are. Here, there, nowhere. Can you get that happy feeling? <laughs> Feeling. To put it in the vernacular of show business, it's like when you're stealing that extra bow. <laughs> That's really beside the point. That's cars, and we're talking about people, show people. And I sincerely mean it when I say there are no people like show people. Happy here is a perfect example of that. A lot of people wonder, why do we call them happy? 
Well, he's, he's like so many show people, you know, they, they smile when they are low. <laughs> and he's low all the time, so we call him happy. <laughs> Another example, of course, oh, his great example is our announcer, Mr. Jerry Hubbard. <laughs> Jerry, I understand you had a bad day at the hospital. Uh, you went in for your annual checkup yesterday. They told you you would not go far. Well, it wasn't that serious, really. The doctor just gave me a prescription for some antibiotics to get rid of this pesky infection I've had. And he said I would not have to go far to the pharmacy. There was one right down in the corner, but I went down on my lunch hour and it happened to be closed, so I had to go back later. <laughs> and that night they opened? And there you are. And there you are, yeah. <laughs> It's funny, the, the people in the prop department here at Channel 6, great sense of humor, they put that quarantine sign on your dressing room door. <laughs> and then the next day on your dressing room, they, they hung a star. star. They're always kidding around like that. Uh, well, I certainly thought it was a joke. Well, well, anyway, let's go on with the show. <laughs> you know, Hap, we ought to do that song some night. Oh, yeah, we've got an interesting idea. What song is that? Um, That's Entertainment, I believe is the oh. name of it. I'm not really sure. It's a great movie, I know that. Oh, it was wonderful. It had everybody in it. Oh, yeah. You know, we had How do they afford a cast like that? Oh, yeah. I don't know. It was almost... <laughs> Just incredible. I guess the big studios have that kind of money. <laughs> we don't. Uh, so we have our next guest instead. Um, there's a whole new kind of music. You know, they had music in that film, and we're dealing with some music here on the show where the lack of it is happy. <laughs> Their music's always changing, isn't it? Sheesh. So it's always something new. Isn't it incredible? Well, the new stuff today is quite different than the new stuff of yesterday, which is no longer new. No. Um, there's a new kind of music called punk rock. I think we've all heard of it. That's sweeping the nation. I guess it's called punk rock... Um, because for the uh, simple reason that it's played by punks. <laughs> They're the ones that are singing it, and uh, there's never a town to be outdone. That's firmly. We have our own, so we found some punks under a rock. <laughs> So please welcome Firmwood's punk rock group. They call themselves 15 and Free, which is the oh. name of their song. <laughs> and maybe the only three acceptable words they know. <laughs> we'll Here they are, see. 15 and Free. Yo, mom and dad are mad. Yo, mom and dad are mad because you hang out with me. I'm glad they say I'm bad, I'm glad they say I'm bad, that's what I want to be. Now they came and they arrested me, I gotta see if I can cop a plea, I just want to be 15 and free. yourself at home, fellas. Uh, don't your uh, parents ever tell you to wipe your feet before you walk on the uh, furniture? <laughs> like we're 15 and free and we do what we want. <laughs> you know, I, I, I hate to seem old-fashioned, but what happened to the musicians that were steeped in good old-fashioned musical, uh, you know, some kind of musical tradition? Yeah. Talking about the old-timers like Bo Diddley and uh, Clarence Frogman Henry, or people who wrote some of the great lyrics, like James Brown, who once said, Baby, please, right. please, please, right. please, right. please, right. please, right. please, right. please, please. Please, please don't go. A man who knew what he wanted to say and knew how to say it. But, you know, I hope you guys don't take this wrong, and I don't mean it personally, but uh, you guys are awful. <laughs> Your songs are awful. You dress awful. Your music is awful. You guys stink. You outright stink. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, 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 hey. I hate to interrupt this interesting debate, but uh, <laughs> we do have to get on with this show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a certain standard to uphold. People in this town know me. A certain image, and I'm sorry, but I'm sure you can understand, and the kids can understand. I'm doing my thing, but there's not room on this panel for both of us, and you understand that. If you insist on having an interview like this, I will have to get up and leave, and I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to bring the show to a stop. <laughs> Jerry, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I respect your convictions. I think that may be going I'm sorry. a step too far. No, you mean no, to I'm say sorry. that if I simply ask them who's the leader of the group, something timid like that? Even a question like who is the leader of the group and bam, I'm gone. Are you serious? Yes. Who's the leader of the group? 
I am. Oh, yeah? <laughs> How did you guys uh, get into punk rock, uh, you punks? Well, we're angry and we're frustrated and we're trying to rebel against a society that's evil and corrupt and violent. Also, it's a good way to earn money for college. Oh. <laughs> Oh, hi, Jerry. Um, if you think I'm still here, I'm not. Physically, I'm here. Mentally, my mind is in Cincinnati. Well, it's getting closer every day, isn't it? <laughs> what can you guys make, for instance, in a, in a night's concert? I guess you'd still have to call it. About uh, 20,000 gross. Holy cow. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, we could. Uh... We cleared 76k last year. That was on a 136k gross, uh, but that was income averaged over the last five years. And how does, long does it take you to play a guitar like that? Yeah. Well, I, I picked it up right away. You know, five, ten minutes. It's not hard. It's sure. just kind of basic. Chord so basically, they ask you what kind of over. You know, right? Sure, uh, help is yourself, man. Yeah. Well, you, well, you, you just put your one finger there. You want the rest of this? No, no, no. Yeah, one there. Put one right down. Put one up here. How much do you have? Your own van? You have like a, your own. We got uh, two, twelve vans and our own and a girl in each van. So we don't. Roll. <laughs> oh my God! Listen, uh, I'd like to talk to you for a little bit. Um, uh, we'll be right back. After this word, I want to just uh, see you in a minute. Thank you. That'll, that'll do nicely, Happy. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Happy Kind. Let's have a, a nice hand. always there with the new things when they're happening. He's just great. You know, we hardly ever get any big stars on this show. Well, because of a almost a policy reason we have here at uh, Firmwood tonight, it's because we feel that that's so common. You know, Merv, Johnny, Dinah, Mike, they'll all have the same people on time and time again. So when those people call to be on Firmwood tonight, we like to say to them, you know, just kind of let them down easy with a gentle, tough apples. <laughs> Tonight, however, we have someone who's been close to all the big stars for uh, close to 28 years now. He was a special makeup artist in Hollywood, and he's just written a book full of fascinating features and theories about the stars. Please welcome Mr. Dwayne Goff. <laughs> the book. Yeah, can we keep this? Sure. Oh, great, because no one usually lets us do that. That's great. <laughs> Beautiful. Dwayne, there's so darn many uh, interesting stories about celebrities in this book. Um, why don't you just give us some of the highlights? We don't have time to read the whole thing, I don't think. Okay, glad to, uh, Barth. Uh, perhaps the question I'm asked most about the book is, uh, concerns the chapter, Where's Sammy? <laughs> and it seems that people are just fascinated and amazed to know that in reality, there is no Sammy Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> I, I are, you, are, you, are you saying that Sam, whew, you, are you trying to say that Sammy Davis Jr. does not exist? That's, right. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I just saw him on the Merv Griffin show. Right. No, that wasn't Sammy Davis Jr. That was Murray Fleckman. <laughs> no, Murray, Murray Fleckman. Who the heck is Murray Fleckman? Well, Murray Fleckman's an actor. He's 59 years old now, and uh, he started as a teenager in the Yiddish Theater in New York. <laughs> And uh, he faded into obscurity in his 20s. Uh, by the time he was 30, Murray was unheard of. <laughs> and he tried uh, to make it as a dancer, you know, sure. but uh, he only knew one step. <laughs> as for singing, uh, I mean, this guy, he was uh, not acceptable unless the band was really playing loud, you know? Cover him up, sure. And his impressions just went flat in the Catskills. So Murray figured that if he put on blackface, that would disguise his identity. Mm -hmm. And then, if he sang and he danced and he did everything, all of it, yeah. right? That would disguise the fact that uh, he wasn't very good at any one of them. I'm kind of curious. Um, so many wonderful old stories in here. What about uh, what about today's stars? I know you, you oh, have a show here on that. Well, uh, for instance, did you know that uh, Wayne Newton is a woman? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I also wrote something about the Osmond brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, millions of people enjoy those boys on television, oh, but yeah. did you know there's one Osmond brother that nobody gets to see? Is that right? He's the black Osmond brother. Oh. That's that Mormon church. You marry more than one wife, and bam, you got a whole family of licorice all sorts. There he is. <laughs> the black child's name is Bubba Osmond. Sure. 
<laughs> Not Randolph. Well, of course, he doesn't sing with the group. Right. But he gets paid to live in Chicago and promise never to come to Utah. I mention every once in a while he helps them out with their choreography, though, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> You know, Dwayne, a lot of what, you, what I read here in your book sounds uh, absolutely like bull. Well, <laughs> it's, are it's you facts. Sure? It's facts based on my theories. Wow. Okay. Hey, well, I guess the, so. That's probably documented and uh, facts, noted in the back. Facts though, based on theories don't lie. This is uh, behind Hollywood. <laughs> I can't say I know everything, but... Uh, I'd say well behind Hollywood. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I can't say that I know everything, Barth, but uh, the book is selling like hotcakes. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's truth enough right there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Maybe we can have you back another time and tell us more. That way people wouldn't have to go out and buy the book at all. <laughs> well, a lot of this is just blank pages. It says, put your favorite story here. Hey! That's not this is not true. Right <laughs> <laughs> I'm just writing on the other. Don't pay any attention. Great idea. That's a nice heft, though. It probably oh, looks yeah. good on trains and planes. <laughs> Papers down on the desk oh, too. Sure. Just, and you know what? Because you get a window keeps slipping down. You can just chart a book about that size. In these summer months, that's a handy tip with the air conditioning. Also, right? a wonderful gesture he made here. He does have the cover on the front here, as you can see. But if you're embarrassed to own this, when people are coming over, you can put it this way on the desk. And that's, what I'm saying. that's great. We'll be right back after these words. Thank you. We're back. Uh, incidentally, uh, these gentlemen, the problem is not with myself being too short, they're too tall. Okay? <laughs> just, like, you know, just make it a little light here. Actually, our main job here on Firmament tonight is to entertain. But sometimes we must do things for the good of the community. Um, tonight, as a public service, we present the Tri-County Area Assistant Coroner, Mr. Ray Sawchuck. <laughs> a very special message for us. What is it, Mr. Sarcher? Thank you. Thank you, Barth. Uh, last evening, a gentleman passed on at the bus station. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the gentleman has not been identified by friends or loved ones, and uh, our space is very limited on at the uh, mortuary facility, so it's very important that we find out his name. <laughs> now, Barth, I would like to address your viewers, if I may, and uh, simply to say, if anyone out there is missing an uncle, or, uh, or if there is someone in your office who usually never misses a day of work, but uh, did today, why not call us here at 555-5624? Or if you have reason to believe that a member of your family has died and you can't find the body, um, <laughs> call us here. This could be your lucky day. Well, without further ado, let's uh, let's bring him on with a nice round, warm round of applause. Come on, let's hear. It. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It's nice to be anywhere. <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, the, uh, the identification process will not be easy for the home viewer because we will only show the uh, general physique. We will not show the face on television out of respect for his dignity. So uh, we have consequently disguised the gentleman's face. Okay. Shall we? Up we go. So he'll be disguised. There we go. <laughs> Looks like that duck in the movies. Yes, it does. It's the disguise. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. in any case, uh, let's, uh, let's zero in on the description. Okay. Uh, he's about uh, 5 feet 10, uh, 160 pounds. Uh, temperature, well, zero. He just got out of the freezer. And uh, he was wearing a wristwatch. He was. Yes, uh, check it out. Uh, Here we go. There it is. Woo. It's a very nice one, incidentally. It's, uh, this, this very watch is available at Morrison's Jewelers. It's the corner of the first. It's like their motto there is, now that you're in the store, why not buy something? Watch is still ticking. 
Which is more than what we can say for him. <laughs> You're right, that's great. And um, he appears to be about uh, 50 years of age. <laughs> Neckties. It has a, it's a pretty one. It has a, a drawing of Anne Margaret standing in a martini glass. What? <laughs> with two little red jewels, just where you expect it to be. And I think it glows in the dark. <laughs> Jerry, look what happens when you lift up the tie. What happens to her outfit? <laughs> <laughs> I used to have one of those, too. It, only they had uh, two little footballs on them. Oh, yeah? I got them a souvenir at a, a Green Bay Packers game. Oh. I really loved those Packers. They were a great team. Yeah, yeah they were my favorite. <laughs> the Browns aren't bad, either. No, they're okay. The Browns, the Bengals are going to give them a run for their money. Yeah, I think so, too. Paul Brown was the greatest oh, yeah. behind the Browns. Yeah, yeah. Now he's with the Bengals. It's going to be great. Absolutely. Yeah. I think if they can get their kicking game together, they're home. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, well, there you have it. That's the body. There we have it, actually, as for the body. But you can have it, too. If you can correctly identify this gentleman, you can do so just by dialing 555-5624. Our phone lines are open now. Ooh, that's quick enough. Great place for it. Hello. Uh-huh. 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 Uh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, I think what you're describing is best described as a dwarf. This gentleman's well over 5'10". Okay? Hope you find him. All right. Bye-bye. Do we also have these uh, calls live in here? I think it's... I should have to explain she was her, missing her dwarf, so if we can have that prompt in. Okay. I'll get, I'll get that, Jerry? Hello? Oh, hello. Excuse me, could you please tell me the correct time? Um, hold on. Let me see. <laughs> Twelve minutes past the hour. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Are you so we're just wearing white shoes. Maybe he was heading south for a vacation. Possible. Who knows? <laughs> so we. Oh, okay. Hello. Yeah, I want to talk to Mr. Sachuk there. Okay, hold on. Can you hold on one second? Yeah. All right, hold on. It's for you. <laughs> Yeah, I just wonder how you think the Packers of 65 would do against the Raiders. <laughs> well, I think they'll be pretty competitive. Of course, uh, nowadays the teams are bigger and stronger, but uh, those old Packers really had a team spirit. <laughs> All right, Packers are great in 78. Yeah. Right on! Keep your eye on the Browns, too. Yeah, I'm okay. staying with the Bengals myself. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's about all our time uh, we, uh, we have for this public service. But as a further public service, we will keep our phone lines open. And if you are, for some reason, missing a loved one or someone maybe you even just liked, you may uh, still call and see if you can identify this individual. Just ask for Name That Body, WZAZ, Channel 6, 555-5624. Corner, I thank you for being here. I wish we'd had better luck in unloading the stiff, but that's the way things go. Incidentally, <laughs> for some of you who are interested in further clues, I couldn't help but notice over there that the wear and tear on both shoes was perfectly even, and that would indicate that the gentleman did not have a limp or possibly limped on both legs at the same time. <laughs> You don't call it a limp, then that's just that just makes you shorter. A good-looking shoe. He would give the appearance of of sneaking up on people. That's right. You didn't have to notice the size on those shoes, did you, Jerry? This, oh, for heaven's sakes! You weren't thinking. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Although they are practically new. You're right. He's, uh, he's sure not going any place. That's my point. He's not entering the Boston Marathon in him, is he? Well, I think he'd want it this way, don't yeah. you? I don't know, they look like about a ten or ten and a half. I'll flip you for them. Okay, you're I on. They <laughs> belong to the county. Oh, boy. You hear about the county seat, you never hear about the county feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show for tonight. Good night, folks. Also appearing on tonight's show were Papa and Diedrich as 15 and 3, Richard Beebe as Mr. Dwayne Goff, Fred Stuffman as Mr. Ray Sawchuck, John Bonney as the assistant's assistant, and Bobby Knight as the body.
Well, looks like we've got a lot of things in this episode. We started with no mirth makers again the band is still on strike and then barth goes into a monologue which is essentially the lyrics from the song there's no business like show business jerry mentions the movie that's entertainment which was a clip film i guess it was a compilation of clips from various films jerry mentioned how many stars were in it and how could they afford it well it's because all the film was collected over decades and decades and cut together into this bit. I mean, there were three films in that series. There were two That's Entertainments and then That's Dancing. And then we get to bringing on the topic of punk rock, which was very, very new at this time. I want to say that punk started in places like London and New York. And by now, 1977, punk is starting to become something that people are aware of. Not the same punk as we hear about now with pop punk. The idea of punk rock, I think, is basically, can you grab an instrument and just go, and who cares about being polished? There's also the political edges of punk, which this clearly doesn't address at all. And really, it's... 15 and free and the thing about them is that jerry hates them so much that he will walk away if the interview continues but then barth of course pushes on that button jerry leaves only mentally the gag of it though is because barth typically doesn't respect most of his guests 15 and free are making pretty decent money for musicians at that point so that peaks Barth's interest and then we see them later with Happy playing the theme song the intros uh, after commercial then we introduce Mr. Dwayne Goff who has written a tell all about Hollywood which appears to be entirely made up facts I mean and even in the set he is talking about how they're facts based on theories this reminds me of a book called Hollywood Babylon which seemed to tell the steamy underside of the Hollywood world. I don't know if this was directly based on that, but here, Goff clearly is making things up, or at least if he believes that they're true, no one else does. And then we have a public service announcement as Barth brings on coroner Ray Sawchuck, normally a John Doe or Jane Doe unidentified dead person, isn't someone that needs to be identified immediately. Hopefully you get someone, but it's not an immediate need. Here, however, Ray, for some reason, feels the need to reach out to the home audience to see if they can identify the corpse that they have underneath the sheets. It is really, how much can we disrespect this dead body putting a duck mask on him, checking out his watch and shoes, putting the phone between his legs, talking about sports instead of actually helping to identify this thing. It's really not treated very seriously, and hey, that's what it is. And hey, that's all I've got to share about the episode today, so let's move forward to the topic of the week. Now, the topic this week will be shows that are not quite politically correct, and that's more modern than the 1970s. I keep getting comments over the history of my doing Good Evening Fernwood that shows like this in the 1970s couldn't be made, and I do not understand this sentiment. Like, even with movies like Blazing Saddles, when people say you couldn't make Blazing Saddles today, I wonder if they mean you can't say the N-word in a show. And then I think further, well, what about Quentin Tarantino? He uses that word quite a lot. Now, I'm not referring to Tarantino's work this week. I'm just looking at comedies and stuff that I've enjoyed that really presses on the boundaries of good taste, perhaps. And I will start there on that topic with a show that I've enjoyed quite a lot. Maybe it was written for people who enjoy things that I like. This is a show called Minora Team, which was on Cartoon Network, I believe, in the Adult Swim block. And it features a set of very racially stereotyped superheroes who are fighting up against the white menace. It is very, very not politically correct, 
And yet, for some reason, it doesn't make me cringe in quite the same way as some of the things that Barth does here. Perhaps it's because these politically incorrect characters actually have some agency? I don't know, but for some reason, I really dig it. And all of the characters are drawn in the style of Jack Kirby, who was a creator who I really, really admired, and that was probably the first thing that drew me to the show when it popped on the screen in front of my eyes. So if you are curious about shows that really push on the edges of taste in more modern times, they exist. And here's an example, Minora Team. And hey, everyone, that's all I've got to share about the topic of the week. That's all I've got to say about today's episode. I hope you'll please share your thoughts below in the comments because that makes me feel good. Thank you so much for watching with me. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, feelings, and impressions in the comments. Thank you to my top tier Patreon supporters because you offer support. And sometimes a person needs support. We will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.